currency. Corn was up one to two cents with the July contract sitting at 365 a bushel. The market was holding its own in technical trade. A higher U.S. dollar was weighing on contracts a bit. The U.S. crop is in good shape with rain due to fall across much of the central U.S. plains. There are some ideas though the market is oversold. Chicago wheat was down one cent with the July contract checking in at $5 a bushel. The market was seeing some declines in U.S. soybeans and feeling the weight of the U.S. dollar. Drought problems in Australia and Russia were supportive for the wheat market. The harvest in Oklahoma is close to wrapping up and Chicago wheat was also getting some support at the $5 level. So that's a look at the Ice Futures Canada and Chicago markets for Friday morning, June 15th in Winnipeg for Market farm i'm dave sims disc bind center pivot disc mower conditioners give you closer cutting and faster dry down butler farm equipment at fort st john can tell you more about new holland's design features like the momax two cutter bar it features large discs that cut more closely with less cutter bar tilt and the wide dry conditioning systems that are 125 inches wide for consistent dry down and maximum hay quality visit butler farm equipment in fort st john and ask about the center pivot disc bind disc mower conditioners from new Holland. The opinions expressed during this show do not represent those of this station. If you've missed any of this show, you can follow the podcast at energeticcity.ca. Now, an in depth look at the news and information shaping our community. This is Trev Talks with your host, Trevor Boland. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our second edition of Trev Talks. We are here on this gorgeous Friday. Um, and again, of course, we are 100.1% community uh, right here on Moose FM. We are uh, getting into our, our first uh, first guest of the show. We've got Chris Gardner online from Independent Contractors and Business Association of BC. Hey, Chris, thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's great to be here. So we, uh, we, we see lately or recently in the news that uh, you guys have... Um, filed an injunction uh, with the with the BC Supreme Court. I'm assuming for um, stopping um, PR uh, proportional representation here in British Columbia, which is is going to referendum this fall. Can you tell us a little bit about that injunction? Yeah, well, you know, it is. Uh, we did file uh, last week with the uh, BC Supreme Court, and basically what we're saying is the process has been rushed. Uh, the question is confusing, and um, and people just aren't going to have the time. To process all the information that they're going to need, that they're going to that they're going to have to to make an informed decision, um, people are going to be asked and to to choose between three types of proportional representation systems, and they're very confused. Um, and if you read the government background papers, they use very complex mathematical formulas to explain how it's going to work. Well, no one's going to understand that, and so we think the uh, the government should go back to the drawing board. Um, and do what do something that was done in uh, 2005, 2009, where there was a lot of lot of debate, a lot of discussion uh, leading up to the 2005 referendum. Um, a citizens assembly was set up. They, they they met, debated for a year. They came up with an option. Voters had uh, over a year to consider that, and then the question was put on the provincial ballot. In this case, the question is not going to be on the provincial uh, ballot. It's going to be a mail-in ballot. And, and the, which, is, which is problematic. And the threshold for approval is only 50% plus one. In past referendums, it was a much higher threshold. It was 60%, and it operated on two levels. Um, so you had 60% of all voters in the province needed to approve it, and 60% of all ridings. And that's important because this is, this is not like changing regular government policy. This is how we elect the government. This is a fundamental change to our democracy. And the government is rushing this process, and effectively they've rigged it to, to to get to the answer that they want, which is they want to change the system. Agreed, agreed. Now, I mean, we don't uh, we don't ever um, you know try to try to sway one way or another. I think it's great what you guys do. Um, I think the fact that you're willing to stand up um, and and do what's needed for businesses for. Um, residents of British Columbia and, and I mean that brings us on to site C as well so I mean you guys were instrumental in um, your petitioning and your information that was shared as far as the pink slip campaign um, for site C and, and we see now that uh, there's a gentleman that's that's uh, again now he's applied to uh, 
to be able to do um, a referendum as far as Site C goes. And, and after all the work that you guys did um, to ensure this project was moving forward, what do you think about this, uh, this, new, this new 10% piece that they're, uh, they're looking for? Well, it's frustrating. Um, and it's frustrating because if you believe that we need to transition to a lower carbon, lower, lower carbon forms of energy and we need to fight climate change, then there's no better... Uh, cleaner source of energy than hydroelectricity. And British Columbia has an abundance of it. We've been blessed with it. And um, this is an investment in our long-term energy future, a clean energy future. So the opposition to this is puzzling. Um, and then you consider that the process was reviewed uh, for, for over four years. There were a number of over 100 different conditions uh, put in place that, that BC Hydro has to um, adhere to both during the construction and operation of Site C. Um, and it's providing, it's a $10 billion project. It's providing jobs and opportunities for over, direct jobs, over 2,000 construction workers, men and women who are working in construction. And it, it's just, it's puzzling. Uh, the project now is probably up to 30% complete. It would be completely insane to stop this project at this point in time. Agreed. And I and I, I look at what the requirements are in order for this to hit the floor, and then I look at the timelines that are required. And, and even if the 10% is met, um, it's still not going to be heard until late into 2020 on the provincial government level, which is, you know, another year and a half of construction and and from what i've what i've heard this year um this year and and going into next spring is a big big year for hands on deck yeah it's um it doesn't make any sense but you know we we've have we have a uh, a strong tradition of activism in in british columbia which is healthy it's healthy to have a debate about uh about issues whether they're large projects or or tax measures or or other decisions that government makes but at some point in time the debate has to end yeah yeah. And, uh, and, and we have to move forward uh, once we've made a decision. This project was reviewed extensively. It was reviewed, it was reviewed not only under the B.C. Liberal government, but the NDP government did, a, did another review when they were uh, uh, elected and over the past year. And after a six-month review, they decided that the project needs to move forward. So we now have to move forward. And the challenge with all of these debates is that it does send a signal to investors outside of British Columbia that... Um, you can't get projects approved and built in this project and that in this province. And that's, that's troubling because we need to have a province that says the, the process means something. Agreed. Laws mean something. Yeah, agreed. And, and especially once you as we're have looking, your permits, you can build your project. And especially as we're looking towards a, a Canada LNG final investment decision, you know, in the next month or two months or whenever that rolls out, it's the same sort of idea. You've got, you've got some very, very large um, international companies looking at spending billions of dollars in BC. Now the question becomes is, hey, you know what, even if we have an approval and we start our project, are we, are we going to get stopped? Is something going to get in the way as we've seen now with, with Site C and, you know, with, with all these other projects and, and um, even with, with PR, right? Is, is the government open to listening to what the people actually want? Yeah, and, and it is, uh, it's very problematic. We've seen, um, you know, the energy sector in, in Canada, frankly, is on its knees. It's been, um, it's vilified at every turn and you've had, Nearly every major international energy company has sold its assets in Alberta. And so Alberta is becoming more or less um, a Canadian uh, energy play um, because investors have said, you know what, you can't, you can't get a pipeline built, so we're not going to invest in, in, uh, in harnessing the asset because we can't ship it out of Alberta. Yeah. And so Energy East was cancelled. Keystone was delayed and cancelled. And, and, you know, now I, I don't know if it will go ahead, even though the new administration in the U.S. has, has talked positively about it. Uh, I Northern think they Gateway did until canceled. these trade war talks came. We're, uh, yeah. we're going to go to a quick commercial, Chris, and, and for our listeners, and we'll get right back into this here in a minute. 
The Peace River Regional District provides government services in the rural areas of the BC Peace and works with the communities that are within its boundaries on regional issues. Let's learn more about the PRRD with Who Knew? The Peace River Regional District. In rural areas, the province collects property taxes within municipal or town boundaries. Property taxes are paid to the municipality. The province and municipalities then transfer funds to the regional districts to cover the costs of the services which are approved by the voters to provide. Who who knew? To learn more about the Peace River Regional District, visit their website at prrd.bc.ca. It's all up to you. You talking to me? What should we play next? Call 250-787-2222 or text 250-800-2360. Brought to you by Wendy. A chocolate frosty or a vanilla frosty? That's one of summer's toughest questions. But when it's only 99 cents, why not try both? The 99 cent frosty only at Wendy's. School District 60 wants you to know you are your child's first and best teacher. You can help your child grow strong roots for learning both in and out of school. Building with your child means build with blocks, Lego, sticks, or rocks to create structures and patterns. Build together and talk about what you are building. Create art. Why? Building with your child helps your child to develop fine motor skills, math, and science knowledge, and it encourages storytelling and artistic expression. For more info, go to familyfriendlycommunity.ca or earlylearning.pm.bc.ca. Rosebrook Flooring is turning 50 and they want to celebrate with you. For the month of July, we're having an inventory blowout sale. Select tile, laminate, and carpet starting at only $1 per square foot. 5mm vinyl plank for just $3.39 per square foot. And a lot more. Only while quantities last, so hurry down to Rosebrook Flooring on 101st Avenue. Your flooring experts in Fort St. John since 1968. I bet you're wondering what you're going to have for dinner. Getting a great meal to feed the whole family is as simple as a one-stop shop to M&M Food Market on your way home from work. Stop in and grab a large lasagna for $13.49, save $3.50, with a shrimp platter for $18.99 and save $2. And don't forget dessert, slice and serve desserts for $13.99. Don't head home empty-handed. Stop by M&M Food Market in the Totem Mall. You're home for great variety and great taste, with gluten-free options available. M&M Food Market. Discover the taste of M&M. The big day's coming up fast, eh? So fast, there's still so much to do. I just went to Veronica's closet. Nice. <laughs> I was just looking at tanning packages and swimsuits for our honeymoon. And some lingerie for the wedding night. Oh, thanks for the reminder. I haven't got mine yet. Find everything you need for the wedding night and honeymoon. Plus lots of novelty items for the bachelor and bachelorette parties at Veronica's Closet. Your all grown up store on 93rd Avenue and at veronicascloset.ca. Watch this show live on Facebook or download the podcast at energeticcity.ca. This is Trev Talks with Trevor Bolin. Welcome back to the show. We are still joined by Chris Gardner of the Independent Contractors and Business Association. Just before we took a commercial break there, uh, we were talking about the, the projects that have got cancelled. We were talking about um, you know, the, the trade war maybe having an effect on uh, Keystone, which, which hopefully it doesn't. Um, but Chris, we were talking a little bit about, about what, what you guys do and, and who you are. Do you want to give us a minute, just tell us real quick here in, in 30 seconds, kind of who you represent, how large you are, and, and why people need to get involved and, and follow you guys on Facebook. Sure. Uh, ICBA, uh, we have over 2,000 members and clients. Uh, we represent uh, the construction sector uh, in British Columbia. Today, about 250,000 men and women woke up, went to a job site, generating about 10% of our economy. And so we talk a lot about issues that uh, not only impact the construction sector directly, but, but issues that are important to our overall economy, the regulatory framework that, it, that businesses and investors face every day, uh, the tax regime, and all of this works together to, uh, to generate our long-term prosperity. And, you know, we have, a, we have a Facebook page, which if you are a supporter of free enterprise, uh, certainly uh, visit our Facebook page. We've got uh, 26,000 followers. We're posting on it every day, and we're talking about issues that are important to, uh, to building a stronger province. And right now we're very concerned with, uh, with what we're seeing coming out of uh, both Victoria and Ottawa 
uh, in terms of what it means for uh, creating investment and jobs, attracting talent to British Columbia, and building a stronger future. And I like that. You know, I think what I love about your guys' page and what I, what I love about the, the message that you spread is that you are in BC. You know, so often we see all, all these, these Facebook pages or these posts or fake news um, that's always against projects or, or bringing up the, the bad side of things. But they're coming from outside of our country and, and, and literally, um, I mean, as far away as, as, as Russia, they say. But, um, I mean, you guys are right here in BC. You're part of it. You're, yep. you're in the mix. So... Uh, Appreciate you being on the show because it, it gives people an idea of what's going on. We're talking there on, on the break um, about, you know, the, the gas tax hike right now that's going on, 1.5 cents per liter, which even in, in Fort St. John, we, we feel that at the pump. So, you know, what happens down there and what you guys are fighting for in order to not only get awareness, but to get people involved hits us at home pretty hard up here in Fort St. John. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate because, um, you know, the province had given the mayors of Metro Vancouver uh, authority to increase gas taxes and within 24 hours this was a new a new power they gave them within 24 hours the, the mayors acted uh, to, uh, to increase gas taxes by 1.5 cents a liter and, and what's interesting is that taxes to politicians it's, it's like it's like they're on crack right yeah. it's just they can't resist the temptation to create new programs and raise taxes and and spend our money so you know, the, the, the new government will say that they balance the budget, but what, what's missed in that message is that they have passed measures that are generating an additional $5.5 billion in taxes over the past year. And the list of new tax measures is long, education tax, the so-called education tax, the so-called speculation tax, an education tax, an increase in corporate income tax, an increase in personal tax, and you go down the list. They've raised $5.5 billion in new taxes, and they spent every single dollar. Yeah. And then they say the, the, bal- the budget's balanced, uh, and they should be proud about that. And it's hurting our economy. It's hurting because, our families. Yeah, it's, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. You will not tax uh, housing affordability uh, and, and create cheaper houses by, by increasing the taxes on, on, the, on, the, on the product. You have to increase supply. It's yeah. basic economics. Yeah. But they, they, you know, and I've said this before, and I'll, I'll probably say it until the day I die, but the one thing government shouldn't get involved in is um, housing, is, is free enterprise. Stop trying to control something by, by making it more difficult. You know what? You want to make it easier? Like you said, it's supply and demand when it comes to the housing market. And I mean, fortunately, John has seen that when, you know, when we're in, in boom times and, you know, you've got one family trying to find something or, or, you know, anybody trying to find something, open it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to, to, to attain um, and you're going to change the fundamentals of that industry without yeah, you know, many, taxing in, it. In many cities and municipalities, it takes as long to get a project approved and permitted as it does to build it. And that's, that's, just, that's ridiculous. And then the other thing we face is um, there is a, an element on the, on the one hand, you have communities saying we need more affordable housing. But when you propose a new condo development or a townhouse complex or a new senior center, oftentimes people in that neighborhood you know, say, no, no, not in my neighborhood. I don't want the neighborhood to change. I want to stay the same. I don't want any more traffic. I don't want any more noise. And uh, so, and then the next day they'll say, oh, we're concerned about the price of housing because my kids can't find a house. Yeah. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got some work to do in terms of educating folks about creating uh, greater density in, in a number of, of, of urban centers and also ensuring that, that city councils and city halls are more responsive to the economic pressures that investors face and you can't you can't tie up a development in approvals and permitting for year after year after year and expect to have enough housing supply to meet demand agreed agreed awesome chris well it's been a blast um ladies and gentlemen if you want to check out what uh, what chris and the group are doing find them on facebook independent contractors and business association of bc um follow their page see what's going on and uh, get involved in the in the fight against these taxes and these changes that are, are affecting us here in the north and as well as you guys in the south um i appreciate it chris we will talk to you real soon great perfect thanks, thanks very a much. lot you bet Coming up next, we've got uh, Sterling Roberts. Um, as mentioned on the Facebook page, Sterling was uh, a, a young man that was raised in Fort St. John and, and moved away. And he's, uh, he's recently invented a new product. And we're going to uh, check in with him on, on what that product is and, and how this, uh, this climb to being an inventor has happened. So uh, check in with us uh, just after this short break. 
If you're planning on hitting a few garage sales in town this weekend, add Home Hardware to your list. Today and tomorrow is Home Hardware's annual garage sale from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days. Enjoy a barbecue put on by Neat and check out lots of great deals from every department. Home decor, tools, gardening, Home Hardware has all kinds of items marked down. The annual garage sale, today and tomorrow from 10 to 5 at Home Hardware. See them on Facebook or visit homehardware.ca. Home Hardware Building Center, here's how. Tires are one of the most important and least exciting purchases you will ever make. No one has ever let out a whoop, performed an end zone dance, and then smooched a stranger after buying tires. No one. But when you need tires, you need OK Tire. Right now, switch to Como Tires. Como Solus is specifically engineered for all seasons all across Canada with road hazard protection. OK Tire, service, repair, and tires. For Como Tires, visit us at OK Tire today at 10808 100th Ave. If you're starting a new job and require safety tickets, PPE, or maybe some new work clothes, Employment Connections would love to help. With the Employment Connections Job Start Program, they may be able to help fund these items for you. To find out if you're eligible for the Job Start Program, stop by the office, give them a call at 250-787-0024, or visit employmentconnections.bc.ca for more information. The Employment Program of British Columbia is funded by the Government of Canada and the Province of British Columbia. Serenity tranquility, peace. The HB Health and Body Wellness Spa is known for providing all of the above, and they're looking for amazing new team members who can do the same. The HB Health and Body Wellness Spa is seeking a certified esthetician and massage technician to join their energetic team. If you think you're the right fit, drop your resume off at the hair bin and ask to speak with Lorraine or Marnie. The HB Health and Body Wellness Spa, located in the Northgate Mall, voted Best Spa and Best Estheticians in the 2017 People's Choice Awards. Locally owned and operated with over 19 years of experience, Marcy's Bright Ideas offers personal customer service with a great selection of home decor, lighting, and more in-store and online. Marcy's Bright Ideas on 100th, Facebook, and at marcysbrightideas.net. It's more than just lighting. This Sports Booster is brought to you by Resilient Towing. For all your towing needs, call 24-7 Resilient Towing, 250-793-7139, because Resilient Towing cares about your safety on the road. Now, a Sports Boosters update. The BC Peace Country River Rats present the 2018 Poker Rally on July 13th and 14th. Catch an evening at the new Pavilion for Popcorn and a Movie on July 13th. Pre-registration is on Friday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Then check out the Pancake Breakfast at Boat Launch July 14th from 8 to 11 a.m. Registration is at 9 a.m. and launch is at 10. Lunch is provided at Happy Hour Corner and last card is at 5 p.m. Dinner at the new Pavilion is at 6 p.m. and is $25 a ticket. Kids 10 and under eat free. For info, go to peacecountryriverrats.ca. Send us your sports info, sports at moosefm.ca, or by fax, 263-9749. Sports Boosters on Moose FM. Pick out the perfect piece at Walker Greenhouses. A new shipment of trees and shrubs have arrived, and flowers and hanging baskets are still in fantastic condition. Plus, everything is 20% off. Walker Greenhouses, open seven days a week on Highway 29, towards Hudson's Hope, and on Facebook. Ryerson Contracting, proud to be a sponsor of local sports. Ryerson Contracting, specialists in pipeline and facility construction, turnarounds, and maintenance. Let Ryerson Contracting's combination of quality personnel and equipment complete your next job with safety and integrity. Call 785-0515. Our community first. This is Trev Talks with your host, Trevor Bolin. All right, folks, thanks for sticking with us. We are, uh, we are going on to our second guest. As mentioned, uh, Sterling Roberts. Sterling has invented uh, the Q-plug. The Q-plug is a versatile um, adapter onto a block heater cord for your car that prevents you from doing damage. Sterling, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So we were talking a little bit there just off air as we were getting ready. Um, you've, you, you're from Fort St. John. I mean, you lived a, a large part of your life in Fort St. John. You are now living in Prince George, and you've invented this Q-plug. Tell us, tell us kind of what that process has been like. How long ago did, uh, did you have this idea? Well, I had this idea quite a long time ago, um, probably in, I think, 2004, when I kind of had the first thought, when I noticed the, the problem. So uh, I've done this my, you know, myself, my mother, everyone I kind of know has at least once in their lifetime for getting driven away. 
and you just get, it's just the way life is. Um, and it wasn't until, so I spent a lot of time on the highway for my current job, and a couple of times a year I see someone dragging an extension cord. And I just, probably 2004-ish, I went, really? Like, like why, why is that a thing? Isn't there something to stop that? And I looked, and I couldn't find it. And, but I, I put it in a notebook, and I just hit, kept hitting little walls, and so I would just kind of sit it back for a bit and then come back to it now and then. And it wasn't until 2014 that I started seriously kind of pursuing it, where I kind of found a design that I liked that wasn't just a loose standard cord, and started running from it from there. I think that's brilliant. So, so for those of people that, that, I mean, online right now, if you're following us online, you, we've got videos posted and we've got photos posted of what this is, but it's, it's virtually two ends um, that are, are magnetized together in order to um, connect your block heater to power and, and light up to show you that it's connected and, and prevents you from driving away with it plugged in. So it prevents damage to your vehicle. It prevents damage to your home. Um, like you said, missing cords or lost cords. I found a lot of cords along the highway over the years. I mean, it's always a score when you're, when, you know, you're driving down the road and you find an extension cord and, you know, you just Quick saved yourself. Here. Yeah, 25 bucks, right? I mean, it's, it's brilliant. So, so you've, you've got this off the ground. Right now, you're, you're doing pre-sales. You're doing prelim stuff. So they can check you out either on your Facebook page or on Qplug, of course. Um, and, and we're looking at... We were talking about this uh, kickstart. So people that are interested in it can, can pre-order them. They can actually even even help get you started by, by selecting a package that gives them, uh, you know, I seen on there, there was, there was packages with 10 Q plugs and 20 that, that companies can do as gifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I have uh, up to 50 just kind of like, you know, consumer fleet stuff. And then I have like 100 and a 250 package that I'll brand for companies as well. So they'll get the branding on the product. So they kind of, it's a gift, a little neat thing to make sure your guys are not damaging your fleet trucks and <laughs> your crew trucks are all good. I just want to interrupt really quickly on the earlier there. It's not magnetic. It's actually just tension and a little bit of air pressure. It's, okay. There's nothing to clip. There's nothing to catch. There's no, you know, no electronics. There's no, like, outside of, it's lit on both sides. One side so you can find it in the snow and the other side so you can know it's working. But it's, yeah, it's just tension. Um, it's meant, because it's not meant to be drugged behind like a lawnmower or anything like that. It's meant to be kind of on a stationary cord. Yeah. But, yeah. And so it, it is, though it is a plug on each side, though, so there's no, you don't need to be an electrician. You don't need to wire anything. You can just, you can plug and play, basically, as they say. Exactly. It's, it's not meant, you're not buying a new extension cord. You're not setting anything up. You plug one end, you block it into one end, and your extension cord into the other, and it becomes your plug from then on. Okay, beautiful. Now, I, one thing I am curious about, are, are we going to see you on, like, are we going to see you out promoting this thing on, on shows like Dragon's Den or some of these, some of these Canadian um, networks that are, are for inventors? Because like I said, you were, you were gone from, you know, your, your past life and, and what you did. You are now an inventor. You are now, you are now selling your invention. Yeah, um, I actually went and auditioned for Kick uh, for Dragons. Then, sorry, up here in Prince George when they were in uh, in the um, in the spring there. Yeah, uh, I'm and pre-sales, so they don't really they like to see sale numbers. Like I have a patent on it on the um, my kind of I got a, a universal rounded connector there. There's no wrong way to plug it in. Yeah, uh, I've got a patent on that, but I'm pre-sales, so they kind of they want to see companies. They're looking to invest in 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 things that are going to kind of already on the go. Well, that's so I'm, easy. I'm I mean, anybody nervous. wants to do that, but how about you take a little bit of a risk like you have right. and, and put everything on the line to come up with something new that's needed? I think it's brilliant. I, I, mm. I, will, I will certainly order one because it's not only going to save me extension cords, but just, just the ease of it and not, not fighting and pulling. And, and you know, I mean, we, we had the winters that this sort of thing is required. You know, Adam and I were talking earlier about this and we said, why is it taken, you know, why is it taken a hundred years um, for this idea to come out? Why were, you know, why were car manufacturers not in this? But you've, you've been the one that has pulled this off. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the run. And, and the reason I'm doing the Kickstarter to some extent as well is to prove the market. So part of the problem that I run into, and, and, and it's great on one hand, cause I'm not, I don't have any competition. But then you kind of talk to people and they go, well, is the reason this isn't out is because nobody's invented it or because nobody wants it. So it's this double-edged sword where I've got wow. this wide open field to work with, but everyone's a little hesitant to take that kind of risk of going after something they just don't even know there's a market for. If I had a comp- competitor of any sort, it'd be like, oh, I could point to them and go, oh, they sold a million units. Like, I can, mine is better in this way and I should be able to take a percentage of those sales. But I've got nothing like that. So, so there's nothing that's even similar to this on the product in, in what, in North America? It, yeah. 
So this is a it, soul, soul exclusive product that has never been invented. Cars have been around since, but I know my family, my family used to manufacture cars um, over in Ontario. And, and I mean, they were manufacturing wagons and then cars. And I mean, that's been going on since 1923. So from 1923 to 2018, one guy, you, Sterling, have, have actually thought of this idea. Yes. That's yeah, phenomenal. And, and, and brought out, there was another company that did a crowdfunder a while ago, but they're a very different product from mine. And they've actually pursued more of the electrical side of things. Uh, they're um, like magnetic and it's all switched and it's, uh, it's, it's a whole other product. But it, they started with a Kickstarter for um, a, a plug in, a block heater thing. But again, it's very different from mine. And I was kind of already most of the way through my product when I noticed that they were doing one as well. Yeah. So if people mm-hmm. want to get involved and they want to see this, be able to hit the shelves at your, your local hardware stores and your local auto stores, uh, the biggest thing to do is, is check out Kickstarter, check out your site. Um, from that point on, they can pre-buy, you know, help you help you get this thing off the ground. And, and what kind of time frame are we looking at? Like I've seen something on there for the end of July. So if, if you can meet your targets for the end of July, will we see this on shelves coming this fall? Uh, not necessarily in shelves because the getting it on to customer or many or sorry um, retailer shelves it's kind of the buying process is the season before okay. but it'll be on my my uh, my site and it'll be in people's hands by this winter I am I should be able to hit that without too much trouble assuming I can meet my goals and you know get the Kickstarter successful allows me to kind of hit those next steps I need to get into people's hands you know what I think it'd be a brilliant place if you were to get these on the shelves and I mean yeah it, it, you know it takes a, a year to get onto that buying cycle but gas stations. You know, yeah. I, I would buy that from a gas station um, in a heartbeat because that's what I'm expecting to see in there, right? Yeah, exactly. You've, 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 you've driven off with your extension cord and you're stopping to grab some gas and you realize that you got your, you know, <laughs> your cords dragging your behind you. And, yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's, that's one of my interests too is just get it wherever I can and, and hopefully I can, I can find someone that'll buy it. They are, like I said, they're, they're usually a season behind. So in the, in the summer, you know, fall, they're buying for the winter. Yeah, you know? exactly. And so I'm, I've kind of already missed that, but, you know, I'll be selling on my website and, and getting it off to people. Okay, mm-hmm. awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to find out more, check out QPlug online. Um, it is on Facebook and then uh, as well as kickstarter.com. You can check out and follow along with Sterling's process so that we can get this on the shelves and have a uh, hometown North boy become the inventor that uh, you've aspired to be since 2014. Sterling, it was, uh, it was awesome having you. I wish you the best of luck and let's keep in touch as this goes forward. For sure. Thank you so much for your Thanks. time. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Awesome. That is a wrap up of our second edition of Trev Talks, um, where we bring you nothing but uh, local and community content to to keep you in the know. So we will uh, see you next week. You've been listening to Trev Talks, a weekly talk show about Fort St. John and the North Peaks. Legend says, many years ago, pirates would sail the Peace River, plundering Fort St. John for endless riches. They buried treasure all around the Peace region. Over the years, and a couple...